I've got some friends up in the Duda Lane. They go to dance. Don't expect to stop until I join the band. Well, you know what I paint, uh, I paint the old south and I paint, you know, uh, people working in the fields and cotton fields and this kind of thing and, and a mule was so, part, so much a part of the southern way of life, you know, when I was a boy and, and that's why I did the mule and this same marketing company that I'm talking about that's doing the textile, you know, the throws and the textiles. Um, and they see it as a political symbol, which they, they want to use the mule as the democratic symbol. And mm -hmm. they also got me to do an elephant head on, on mm -hmm. one. And that's still in the works. I have carved one, but um, anyway, I'm going to do one. Um, and probably, that'll probably have to have a patent on it also. But um, that's still in the works, the elephant head up in a little two-room house and, and that little house it, it didn't have glass windows in it it had wooden wooden doors that you could swing open and anyway um, when when we were little boys um, in the winter months when the blackbirds would come and the farmer there would plant wheat or oats or whatever and we didn't have much backyard at all it was just planted right almost right up it had maybe had 10 15 feet out the back door, and then it was farmland. And anyway, the blackbirds would come in droves, and I know you've seen them in the winter months, how they come in like mm -hmm. fields, it'd just be millions, I guess, sometimes. And anyway, we had a old 12 gauge single barrel shotgun. And we'd run in the house and tell mama that blackbirds were in that field out there, and mama would load up that old single barrel 12 gauge, and she'd swing that window open, and just stand right in the house and she'd shoot those blackbirds, you know, when they fly up like that, you could shoot at them and sometimes you'd kill 20 or maybe 30. And a lot of them have their wings broke or something and we'd run and we'd be picking up blackbirds, you know, and some of them be live, you know, and we'd pull the head off. And <laughs> but anyway, that's what we ate for supper. We ate them. I mean, people people don't believe that, but um, oh man, Mama cooked those blackbirds, me, and we had. And I know you've heard of blackbird pie. I tell you, my my mama was a cook at a little three room schoolhouse, and um, I guess it was a blessing that she had such a job because she would have leftovers, you know, and she'd bring home leftovers from from that day at school, and. And I remember most of the, what my three teachers at, the, at school, because it wasn't a three, it was a three room schoolhouse, but my mama and there was a black lady that helped her, you know, and the three teachers, they would divide up the leftovers and bring home every day. And I guess that kept us from going hungry a lot of times because um, if it hadn't been for that, I don't know, sometimes, you know, I don't know what we'd have done. And I can truthfully say that I have never gone hungry in my life, but I have seen the time when there was nothing in the, eat, in the house to eat. And my mama had flour to make bread, to make biscuit. Mm -hmm. And she would take sugar and put water in it and put it on the stove and, and boil it and make it thick like syrup. And we'd eat those biscuits and sugar water, you know. And, you know we made a meal off of it and it was good. <laughs> and the walking canes, I'm not going to, um, that'll be the only carving that I'll do. And I, and actually, I, I'm not going to sit down and hand carve each one of those. I mean, they'll be done on a duplicate machine. But um, I'm concentrating more on, on painting than anything else. I mean, that's, that's my focus right now. And, um, I feel like I have to paint what I'm painting and it's just a burning inside of me to, to bring this out, and bring these, I have such vivid memories of these days, you know, growing up the way I grew up and the environment that I grew up in and, and I just want to capture it and, and I want to put it down as part of our history and, you know, and, and I feel like one day, if it's not appreciated now, and I'm sure there's some people out there right now that appreciates it, but uh, I feel like one day it'll be appreciated. Man, 
His name was Booker T. And he'd come around on a mule and wagon and he'd buy scrap iron from you. And he'd give you, I think it was a half cent spam. But if you had 50 pound, you had a quarter, you know. Mm -hmm. And he had cotton scales on the wagon and he would, he would take you you iron and throw it in a broker sack. He bought from everybody. He went with all the houses, you know. The old plow points, or any kind of metal that, was, mm -hmm. that we could get our hands on. When they took the railroad up in Oswego, we just about got rich. Picking, I got to go back to that A model. We had an A model, and uh, we'd take the back seat out of the A model and back it down the railroad track as far as we could back it. And those plates and, and spikes. Yeah. Oh, man, we'd feel like we'd have that a model dragging the ground coming <laughs> home.